So what I have here is a Breville Cafe Roma espresso machine. And the problem is it's not heating up at all. So the heating light, the heating indicator stays on uh, without producing any hot water or steam. So when you turn the hot water on, the water coming out is cold. And when you turn on the steam on, all that we get are little spurts of water. So there appears to be something wrong with the heating mechanism inside this espresso machine. So you want to start the repair by removing five screws. There are two along the back. There's one underneath the water reservoir lid here. And there are two recessed screws up near the group head. One here and one there. So you want to use a long screwdriver. Take the drip tray out and insert your screwdriver up into the recesses to get those screws. They are Phillips head screws. So once we have all five screws removed, we can remove the lid. So it comes straight off just like that. We can have a look inside and try and see what's wrong here. So with the lid off, we can see what's going on inside the machine here. At the front, we've got the circuit board with the power switch and the indicator lights. Um, the big gray aluminum thing is the thermal block heat exchanger mechanism where the water passes through a heated block to heat it for the coffee and for the steam. Uh, we've got the thermostats here. One would be for steam temperature and one would be for brew temperature. Uh, and running through the middle here would be a thermal fuse. So if it got to be too hot, I believe something in here will break and it will cut the power to the, to the heating mechanism. So coming along the back side, we can clearly see what's going wrong with our uh, espresso machine, why it's not heating. So the connections to the heating coil inside the heating block are at the back here. And this one here is completely corroded and it has come off completely. So with one side disconnected, the heating block won't work at all. So that's why we're not getting any hot water for our coffee and we're not getting any steam. So we're going to have to access the back side of the heating block here where the connections are and re-terminate this somehow, clean it up, maybe add a little bit of solder, see if we can get the heating element to power up again. So I want to remove the water reservoir here and the plastic reservoir holder, um, which in turn is connected to a circuit board with some connections here. I want to be able to remove that so I have cleaner access to the contacts at the back of the heat exchanger. Um, so to do that, the first thing we will do is remove the water reservoir, so that comes straight up the top, like that. And we'll proceed by removing the circuit board from this plastic barrier. It has two slots in it, and it slides right out the top, like that, so that's free. Now we will be able to turn the machine over and access the screw holding this in from the bottom, so we have a clear view of the terminals that we need to fix. So with the Breville Cafe Roma on its side, we're going to be removing six screws from the plastic bottom panel here and two of the feet screws near the front of the machine so we can get this plastic panel off so we can remove the screw holding in the water reservoir holder. So we'll do that now. So there's two screws at the front of the bottom panel that go through the feet are a little bit longer and they have a washer attached to them. So make sure to keep those together and keep them separate from the shorter six screws that hold the bottom plate in. So with the eight screws removed from the bottom plate, we can now tip the bottom plate down, pull it away from the machine and tip it down. It's still connected to um, a tension relief, a strain relief on the power cable and a little distribution block here on the bottom panel. So you won't be able to completely remove it. But if we just tip it down, we will be able to access, I think it's this screw here, which goes up through the plastic reservoir holder. So we'll be able to remove that and pull the reservoir out. Another thing that we can do at this time is remove the uh, water supply hose from the reservoir. So all we have to do is you can use your fingers or a set of pliers. It's a little hose clamp that pinches and moves down. And then from there, we can remove the hose from the reservoir. After doing that, we can go ahead and take this screw out. And 
we should be able to push the plastic reservoir holder up through the top of the machine and out. And doing this just allows for greater clearance at the back of the heating block so we can fix those connections. So now we've got a clear view of the back of the thermal block and we have two terminals that go into the heating coil within the thermal block. Um, and it looks like the one on the right side here is completely detached. It looks like a combination of maybe heating and cooling cycles, maybe a little bit of corrosion. It's caused this uh, spade terminal to actually break and this is no longer connected. So what I'm gonna do is uh, re-terminate it with a little bit of solder and some heat shrink and hopefully it'll last a little bit longer, keep this machine working. So I've got some tools here with me to help me re-terminate those connections to the boiler. Uh, so I've got some heat shrink here, some shrink tubing. I've got my soldering iron, got some solder, and I have a wire brush here to help clean up the corrosion on the existing contacts. So we've got the two contacts exposed here. Uh, I'm gonna start by disconnecting the left side, the red wire. It appears to be in reasonable condition, but since we're cleaning up the other one that's broken, we may as well fix this one up too. So what I've done here is cut a small piece of shrink tubing, and I'm gonna slip it over this wire all the way up, and then plug it back in. So the idea behind this would be to, once we have soldered this connection back on, to put the heat shrinking over it to hopefully keep that connection secure for longer, protect it from corrosion, and protect it from heat. So I've got some heat shrink there, I've slipped a piece down on this blue side. Uh, and we'll keep going here. So on the side that was very badly corroded and broken, I'm just gonna use this wire brush to clean it up a little bit. Try and get both sides there. Part of the spade there is actually broken off. I'm not sure if it's disappeared or if it's just kind of corroded away, but I'll plug what I can back onto that connector to prepare it to be soldered together. So I was able to successfully solder the connection on the left. But the one on the right is proving to be a little bit difficult. It doesn't seem to want to solder on very well, probably because this end itself is very fragile and it's starting to come away. So it's not making good contact with the connection on the boiler side of things. So what I think I'm going to do is take a new female quarter inch spade connector, replace the terminal on these two wires leading to the right side boiler connection. Uh, so replace this connector entirely with a new one that's tight fitting and then put shrink wrap over top of it to create a secure connection. So what I've done here is I've re-terminated the blue end to the heating element. Uh, I put it on the what was remaining of the spade on the heating element and I added a little bit of solder here. So what I'm going to do now is slide the heat shrink down over those terminals and heat it up to form a connection. So now I've got the shrink tubing in place ready to be heated over the connection. Um, so I've got a slightly bigger piece of heat shrink on the right hand side here where I put the new terminal just because the terminal was a little bit bigger than the existing one on the left hand side. I've made a little uh, heat shield out of tin foil just to cover the Teflon tubing running from the pump to the thermal block. Just so when I use my lighter here to heat up the heat shrink, uh, I don't damage anything. Because that would cause a whole different set of problems. I'm just going to gently heat this up with a lighter. And you see it forms over the connection, giving a nice tight connection. Gonna do it in spurts so as not to damage anything. Just 
So that looks pretty good there. It's nice and tight. I think that's going to hold up well. So the next step would be to reassemble the machine in reverse order. And then we'll fill it with some water, plug it in, and try it out. So now I've got everything reassembled. Put some water in it, it's plugged in. I'm gonna turn it on here. And what we should see is instead of the heating light staying on and never going off, uh, we should see the heating light go off after a short period of time. And we should have hot water now that our element is re-plugged in. So I can hear that it's making noise. I can hear some water boiling in there. That's a good sign. Seems to be working. And there are heating lights out now, so should have hot water. Yeah, water's nice and hot. Let's try the steam. Alright, so that's how you would go about fixing a Breville Cafe Roma espresso machine that was either not heating up at all or wasn't able to heat up high enough to heat the steam. There could be a problem with the terminals on your heating element.